you know, I, I look at this stuff, we sit around, I mean, let's face it, every time we're there, we're having a beer somewhere, what are we talking about? We talk about sports or politics. Right. That's, all, that's, yeah. All yeah. that's all you talk about. And with my athletic ability, I like to talk about yeah. I like yeah. to talk about We were hoping more. we could get, yeah. On, yeah. get yeah. to yeah. that yeah. today. Yeah. 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 With my <laughs> athletic ability anymore, I'd rather talk about <laughs> politics, you know, so, you know, sit with you two. <laughs> All right, well, Mike, welcome to the table. Uh, Mike Coffey, the owner and operator of Saputo's and Papa Frank's, and now recently the uh, state rep for the 95th District. We appreciate you joining us. Well, thanks. I'm glad to be here. This is a pretty impressive studio. <laughs> Who put this together? You <laughs> yeah. or Brad? Uh, Brad, Brad? Brad did, did all the okay. heavy lifting, yeah. like always, yeah. of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll get into uh, your political uh, life and aspirations in a minute, but I think people always love to hear the story behind the story. Give us a little bit of the history of the family restaurant business, because I think there's a lot there to be told that folks probably don't know about. Well, yes, yeah, Saputo's is, you know, it's a landmark in Springfield anymore. I mean, it was started in 1948. My grandfather and his twin brother started it, but their parents always worked there. So my great-grandparents, my grand great-grandfather was the bartender. My great-grandmother was the cook. So the two twins started that. They decided to get out of the coal mines because it was a lot better to, you know, serve pasta than it was to shovel coal. So <laughs> They had coal trucks. That's how they started, though. They had, the whole family was in the coal business, and, and they slowly they saved their money to open up the restaurant, and then they kind of transitioned over into uh, the restaurant business. So the twins owned it. Uh, they'd work a week on, a week off, a month on, a month off. Uh, they had they had a great setup, a far better setup than we've got today because you know he worked, his wife worked, so uh, the grandmothers worked in the kitchen with my would be my nana, which would be my great grandmother. Uh, the men kind of stood out and had cocktails and did more of the entertaining stuff. But my grandfather created all the recipes with his mother. He and his twin brother, they created all the recipes. So everything that's at Saputo's is handmade. Uh, and it still is today. My mother makes most of it. And I, they're, they're, we're the only two that make any of the recipes down at Saputo's. Wow. So they've, since 1948, we've used basically the same ingredients, uh, same recipes. We don't change anything. A lot of people say, oh, you know, we've got all the new restaurants and they do this and they do that. And we don't do anything new. I think one time a really pretty girl came in and uh, asked for why we didn't have chocolate cake and my dad put the chocolate cake in. But, <laughs> but since 1948 that's the only menu change we've ever had. So, uh, so yeah, Knowing your dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's, he's like, Big Mike, why don't you have chocolate cake? Now, I don't know, next week uh, we had chocolate cake. So. But other than that the, the menu stayed the same and uh, we, we think that you know one of the great things about Saputo's is that when people come in, they know what they're going to have. They they come in on the same day, sit at the same table, and I kid you not when I say they order the same thing. Uh, I've got people that have come in every week for 20, 30, 40 years and gotten the baked lasagna or they get the chicken parmesan. They don't veer from the products. Uh, it's very strange. It is, it's a great place from the standpoint of you get all walks of life. I think a lot of times people are like, Oh, you know, that's fancy. No, our big base, customer base, is really the north end of Springfield. Yeah. Uh, the the everyday working class uh, men and women, they come in, and then we get business people as well. We get politicians. It's really the only restaurant I've ever been in. You get a real cross-section of the city that comes in there every single night. So it, it's, it's a very inter interesting place. It's a great place to go and hang out. If you want to go to the bar, it's just like Cheers. You'll sit there. If you're somebody that travels and you're alone and you want to just you know, go have a drink or get something to eat, sit at the bar, you'll make friends instantly. So it, it's, it's really, it's, it's really a fun place to go to. And then in 2015, we kind of expanded out west. We opened Papa Frank's out there. And that was more to capture some of the families. You know, as the city's grown further and further west, we wanted yeah. to have a presence out there so that we weren't forgotten and all that. And that's been very successful. And, we, you know, we just to kind of keep our customer base alive and flourishing. So yeah. that's pretty much the story cool. right well, there. Hey, I can vouch for it since I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I remember going there with my mom and dad. 
many, many, many years ago, and it's uh, yeah, and been a staple of Springfield well, forever. And that, and that is, and you know, that is one of the nice things about Saputo's. I mean, you you live here now, but when you li went away, it's funny the families that the kids move away, they always want to come back to Saputo's because, quite honestly, if you lived in uh, if you lived in Springfield twenty years ago, the only thing that still here from 20 years ago is Saputo's. Saputo's, yeah. that's the only you know so it's yeah. it's really a landmark for springfield i mean yeah. it's the only we're we're the oldest restaurant in the city of springfield owned by the same family in the same location i know a lot of people say molders but they've had several different owners and all that mm -hmm. stuff but as far as one family one location we are definitely yeah. the well, oldest a ton of people far. from decatur come over here right. a lot oh yeah you know? i mean i've heard of saputo's for ever since i was a young kid right yeah, yeah. i know we yeah. a lot a lot of business people from decatur come come over all the time so yeah. no we've got a great we've got saputo's those restaurants got the best customer clientele of any restaurant. There's no question about it. So, so did you uh, were you always planning as you were growing up to be in the family business? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I always wanted to have a family business, being a family business, just not that family just, business. No, okay. how, how, we'll say, we'll I say more. A, I wanted a much bigger, <laughs> more, but you know, I, so the way circumstances. I, I went to U of I. Was you know really thought I wanted to be a, a lawyer and stuff like that. But I had an unfortunate incident where my brother was killed in a car crash when I was a junior in college, and so. Pretty devastating my parents, my family, myself, everybody. But uh, so I kind of finished up and kind of came home and in that takeover, but worked with my parents and all that. So I've been doing that since I, I graduated in 92 from University of Illinois. So, Just a young guy, yeah, 1992. Yeah, in 1992, <laughs> that's right. So. What, um, I've always heard people say that the restaurant business is the most difficult business to make it in. Well, What's been your key to success to Saputo's and Papa Frank's? Well, the key to success is that, you know, we we pretty much do everything. It's family. We're there all the time. Um, it, it, and it's a grind. You know, I think a lot of people can make it in the restaurant business, but I don't think they want to put in the hours. I, I think that's the big key. Uh, we've always got a family member there. I mean, we're just now, because we're, we're, we're thinning down on the family pool, mm. you know, we're not there <laughs> sometimes, but we're still we're still there every day. Uh, and, and I think that's the real key. And then consistency. You know, you can't change change things up. I think consistent product every day. People know what they're going to get when they go there. So uh, consistency in, in family and, and hard work. And we've been very lucky, especially at Saputo's, a lot of long-term employees. And so we just really, I'd say in the last five years, we had turnover. I mean, we had our, our servers and bartenders been there 20, 30, 40 years. And so just now we've really had some turnover in the last five years. But, yeah. uh, you know, I can't, uh, there's, uh, I'd say half of the people, you know, know my grandparents that, yeah. And they've been dead for, you know, 10, 12 years. So half of them, uh, you know, still know my grandparents and were sitting there when they would come in. So I, I'd say family, family presence and consistency would be the number one thing. Yeah. You have a hard time finding people. Having a hard time finding Just people. I, and I don't understand it. Yep. I, you know, I don't know if, and, and that's one of the things is they've taken on the state rep, every business, you know, yep. and because of the business I'm in, you know, I'm friends with you and and all the people that I know really own their own business. And for some reason, it's just really difficult to get anybody to come back to work. I don't understand it. I, um, yeah. I think it's going to turn here. Unfortunately, it's going to turn because of inflation rates and the way things are going in the economy. But, uh, you know, just getting people to come back to work. They don't want to work like like they did. And I'm even talking young people. I, I, I'm i very surprised at how many young people just don't want to put in the hours. They, right. they yeah. just don't want to. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's good, bad, or indifferent. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're in a business that's it's hours, manpower, and that's what you've got to have. You, there's not a lot of intellectual knowledge and working at home on a computer to get things done. So it, it's extremely yeah. difficult for, you know, people in, in, in a labor intensive business like the one you guys are in, the one I'm in. So it, it's tough. So, you, you know, and then you, you with the you start paying, you, know, you have to pay more. And so then, you know, the, you, it, the costs rise because, well, now how am I going to pay this new guy more when this guy's been here working for me for 10 yes. years? Yes. And so it, it, it's it, then that becomes hard to manage. Yep. Uh, and so there, there's just a lot of trials and tribulations going on I right now. More. I mean, I think it was a, two years ago, a year and a half ago, I think yeah. we did a 30% across the yeah. board pay increase, not merit-based, yeah. just to, you know, keep the people around, stay competitive and, in hopes that, you know, we're going to draw new people. But yeah. it, I don't know where they went. Cause I mean, you know, five years ago or even before COVID, I mean, we had, you know, you could 10, 15 people applying for jobs all the time. Right. I, I, this was the first time ever. I used to have people walk through the door, fill out apps every day. Somebody, one, yeah. you know, every day somebody would send in an app. 
I've gone years without anybody right. walking through the door to fill out an app. Yeah. Years. Yeah, I've never seen an environment I, like I, this I've, from I've a never seen standpoint. Anything, you yeah. know, just not even inquiring about an right. app. And then I've and got, I, I want, you know, it feels like it changed through and after COVID. Right. But I wonder if it was a, a trend that was even beginning beforehand. I don't know. I don't remember it being quite that this way yeah. prior to. Yeah. But there seems to be, as you said, some of this uh, mentality of just not wanting to put in the work, the hours, the time, yeah. uh, even when you do find folks. Right. It's so. it's crazy. And then, you know, I, I've never been in an environment where <clears throat> the, the demands from the employee to management are the way they are and you're having to comply because if you don't you know i mean we've you've got we end up having people that you think 10 years ago i would have cut them mm -hmm. no chance yep. yeah but now you have no one to backfill and so it, it business it's it's a tough environment for business because the costs are just going up drastically and i don't even think that's hit yet yeah. especially in the restaurant business uh, be, because they it happens weekly, and you can't change your menus weekly, and, and especially in this town, there there's a certain price point they want yeah. everything in, and so I think you're going to find you know the restaurants going out of business and having much much harder time here in the next couple of years, and I'm very concerned about it. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, just making a little bit of a switch here. Um, so you were recently appointed to fill the seat for the 95th yeah, district. Yeah. Uh, tell, and, and I know, and I don't remember the year, uh, you ran for mayor previously huh. in Springfield. You've all, it's to me and conversations we've had over the years, you've always had some uh, aspirations in the political yeah. arena. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about that. And what are the biggest challenges we, we face uh, from your perspective? Okay. And uh, what are you trying to get done for, uh, for the community. Well, to kind of give you a, <clears throat> a backup to it. Yeah, I did run for mayor. You know, I've always dabbled in politics. I've been at the Bank of Springfield Center right. as the chairman since 2005, got on the board in about 1994. So I've been there, you know, almost going on 30 years. Mm -hmm. I've been a precinct committeeman, the Republican Party. And then, yeah, I, I ran for mayor in 2010 unsuccessfully, unfortunately, but learned a tremendous amount yeah. about it. I also put in when Mike Murphy ended up being the rep for, I think it was the old 87th, uh, 99th, 99th, 99th yeah. district. Um, I put in for that, and then they selected him instead of me so many years ago. So I never thought I was going to do it again. I'm like, hey, done with politics. I got two businesses. <laughs> yeah. But when Tim Butler, you know, stepped down, I thought I had several people say, well, why don't you try it again? You ought to do it. It's a perfect district for you. You, we, you know, we need somebody that's a business owner, uh, understands what, you know, what the challenges are in, in our town and things like that. So I thought about it and then put my name in. I was fortunate enough to have Sangman County select me for the post. Uh, why I want to do it, you know, I, I look at this stuff, we sit around, I mean, let's face it, every time we're there, we're having a beer somewhere, what are we talking about? We talk about sports or politics, right. that's, all, that's, yeah. all you, that's all you talk about. And with my athletic ability, I like to talk about yeah. I like yeah. to talk about We were hoping sports. we could get, yeah. On, yeah. get to yeah. that yeah. today. Yeah. 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 With my yeah. athletic ability anymore, <laughs> I'd rather talk about politics, you know, so, you know, sit with you two. But, but uh, so, so you sit around, and, I, you know, I just looked at it, like I said, I, I've got five generations of family members that have lived in Springfield. Uh, I'm fortunate in it that my kids, you know, where so many people in my position, their kids are moving out of town. Mm -hmm. I'm getting my kids to move back to town. And the opportunity arose, and I think somebody from the community that's a business person, that's roots are in Springfield. Yeah. Whether I get the position or not, I'm going to live and die in Springfield, whether I'm okay. a rep or not. So instead of sitting there and complaining <clears throat> and bitching and moaning and all that, you know, I'm hoping that I can do something because I think – because of the business I'm in, uh, one, you know what the day-to-day -day grind of the supply chain is. You know what it is with employees. You know what the problems are. But with Saputo's, because of the context I made statewide, I, I'm one of the few reps. Like, you know, in Springfield, it's not that exciting that I became the state rep. But all of the reps up in Chicago, it's very exciting. The Saputo's guy's the state rep. So I have contacts not just in Springfield, right. throughout the state. So what I'm hoping is that I can convince all these people, they come down here, Springfield's their playground, they go around, and when they come and they see the downtown, they look around and say, boy, what's going on here? So yeah. I'm hoping that I can convince them, say, hey, this is the home of Abraham Lincoln, it's the state capitol, help us out. You know, we need certain projects, we need money, we need jobs, we need growth, we need construction in the 95th district and Springfield and Sangamon County and Christian and Macon County, Central Illinois as a whole, and try and convince them that, you know, we need to invest in the state capitol, we need to invest in Central Illinois. 
And that's what I hope they can do is, you know, I, I, I'd love to tell you that I'm going to change, you know, Illinois policy from top to bottom. We would love that. Good luck. Good luck. There's 118 reps, 78 of them are Democrats, 40 are Republicans. Yeah. Uh, my rank is 101, 101 out of 18. That's my seniority rank. So to, to think that that, but I think if you can talk to people and you can walk across the aisle and say, hey, this is great for Springfield. These are things that we need to get done in central Illinois in the 95th district. Uh, I, I think they'll listen. One one thing that I've been overwhelmed is going into the chamber, how nice the people are. Staff is tremendous. The staff for both the Republicans and Democrats are tremendous. They work really, really hard. Uh, and then it, all of the reps have been very cordial and very nice. And I think everybody, when they get into that, they want to they want to make a change for right. the for the better. We might disagree on what those changes are, but I think everybody's heart's in the right place. So I'm hoping that we can connect and maybe you know produce some results for you know my hometown, your hometown, yeah. your hometown indicator. But right. you know, and and that's really why I did it. So and no other reason. I have no aspirations for another political office. I don't want to be a congressman. I don't want to move up. I don't want to be the governor, secretary, any of that. Not that it would happen anyway, but I just so you know, I don't want it. Well, we were printing coffee <laughs> yeah. for governor. Yeah, coffee yeah. for yeah. governor. Bumper yeah. stickers yeah. the other day. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so because of your business, though, did you know a lot of the uh, the Democrats and the Republicans yeah. in the House? Yeah, and absolutely. You know, yeah. know a, t a ton of them. You know, yeah. and they still and they still come in. Yeah. And so it, it's easier to talk to somebody about a bill or something that's going to happen when you know them on a social level than sure. it is just on a business absolutely. level. You know, yeah. when you're in the chamber and everybody's there, there's 118 people. People running around, it's hard to go and say, "Hey, yeah, right. you know, I, I want to talk to you about the mill." And they're, yeah, yeah. But if you're if they're having a drink or you're sitting there in a social atmosphere and you start talking, and they say, "Yeah, I feel that way too." Why don't we do something right. like that? Yeah. And so that is my hope that through you know just a, a social atmosphere that you can get to some of these people and get them to you know help us out down here in Central Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what you're uh, referencing makes all the sense in the world. Whatever the walk of life somebody uh, is in everything the good that happens happens through a relationship right if you don't have a relationship with people um the opportunity or the the chances yeah. to get something done at least i believe yeah. uh with some of those folks uh will be that much more challenging yeah. so and the fact that they visit saputo's for <clears throat> years and years and years when they're in town for session yeah. uh sets it up for the perfect right. relationship yeah. to do that and Springfield's a relationship town, and you've got lobbyists. I know the lobbyists and all that. And not that, you know, I'm, I, the lobbyist is probably a bad word, but it's the reality of politics today. They're all over the say yes. So if you've got, you know, it helps to know who the players and who, who is for an issue, who's against an issue to try and, you know, make sure something happens. So that's what I'm going to try and do, and we'll see if I'm successful or not. We'll know We'll know in two years when I run if I win or not. That's how you know if I'm successful <laughs> right. or not. Yeah. So. Yeah. How important is it to bring Bill? to to the table or well is that an issue <clears throat> does that report or, or? Uh, you know it I, I don't know, you know, if, if it were up to me, uh -huh. I, I think we should go two years and not have any bills. We Amen. should, for two years, we should eliminate yeah. laws for two straight years. We yep. shouldn't add more laws. I mean, let's face it. Is there any law that's going to change your life today? Right. You know, yeah. and, I, and for most people, no. Uh, most of them make it more 6, difficult. There's 6,000 bills, 6,000 yeah. bills okay. that are going to be filed, and some won't see the light of day. Most of them probably won't see the light of day. Mm -hmm. The Democrats have a total control over what bills get to committee right. and if they get released from committee and gotcha. all that. So uh, I, I've got a you know I've got a few bills in. One is to eliminate the estate tax completely, mm -hmm. uh, and one reason for that is you know we've got a lot of farm families, and that's one of the things yes. they're concerned about. Awesome. You know, yeah. here they are, you know they they're working, and you know the value of land is goes up. So I I, I know that four million dollars <throat> is a lot of money. But it, it, it's if it, it's not four million dollars cash, you know, it's invested in land and yes. all that. So, grandpa and grandma die, and they go over. Now all of a sudden, you don't have four million dollars in cash right. or five million. You got to pay taxes on it. Right. It's very cumbersome. And, and quite honestly, I just think an estate tax altogether is wrong. Take somebody like my grandfather started, you know, get, leaves the coal mines. Never went to Florida. Or he went to Florida, but never got on an airplane, never traveled, never belonged to a country club, never bought, you know, had one car, all that, saved all his money because he had two little girls that that's what he was worried about. And he saved all of his money so that he knew when he died, his two little girls would have something so that their life would be better. Now he he worked, paid his taxes, saved all of his money, invested all his money. So now he's dead and he's got to repay or you want to take, that's not fair. That's that, that's communism is what that yeah, is. And, you know, it's, it's not the government's money. It's, you know, 
it's our money. Absolutely right. And they and, and they need to understand. Like, that was the one thing my grandpa always said. Michael, remember one thing. Every dime, every dime that goes in that cash register, that's your money. That's not that government's money. That's yeah. your money. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna remember that everywhere I go. <laughs> Unfortunately, in my case, it's Lori's money. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather give it to the government. The government it takes less than she does. So, Are you uh, saying they would spend it more wisely yeah. than Lori? No, yeah. no, 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 both. <laughs> <laughs> no, both, but yeah, I, it costs the government costs less. <laughs> you know, when they take their half and Lori takes all the rest, you know, I'm, I'm left with nothing. So that's why I'm trimming right. down. I'm hoping yeah. I can get some of uh, uh, Brad's, Brad's yeah. leftovers. How, you know, how much weight have you lost? Since I don't you took know. The job I don't know. Uh, well, to, uh, probably about 25 pounds. You know, the, the uh, 20 pounds. You know, the, yeah. the burdens of leadership are tough. <laughs> the, the stress <laughs> is of, yes, what, yes. Once once you get over to the capital and see what they're doing, yeah. I mean the stress. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, oh my goodness! Yeah. So, no, but, I'd rather uh, not know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know we, yeah. it's probably yeah. it's, yeah. it's probably best. <laughs> yeah. But, What's the biggest surprise you've yeah. uh, how run into? Well, how slow government works. Yeah. Slow, 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 uh, and they're not on time. And I don't really appreciate not yeah. being on time. Yeah. They they say they're going to start at eleven. That might mean twelve fifteen. They say they're going to start at eleven. It might mean eleven thirty. They say they're going to start at eleven. <laughs> could be eleven forty five. Could be twelve forty five. You just don't know. So I'm not used to you know in business. I've got an appointment yep. eleven yeah. o'clock. I'm yeah. there ten minutes early. Right. Right. Yeah. That's what you grow up with in business. That's right. But not in government. Yeah. yeah that no. means time is nothing to them. So. Yeah. Nah, I really don't like that. In fact, I, you know, I find it rude and inappropriate and everything else. So, but that's the way it is. So I've got to adapt to that. You know, <laughs> yeah. but it'll be my luck. I'll go late. I'll go late one day, and they'll start, start on time. On time. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. probably, yeah. probably bait me into it. It's a trick. They're trying to get me right off the bat. We're going to get the freshman yeah. right there. Uh, so, but it. that would be the biggest thing. You know, yeah. and it's more complex. I, I, I think as you sit and you think, oh. They don't. Well, government is way more complex than uh, you give it, you know, than I think the average citizen gives it yeah, you know, I credit agree. for. Uh, not that it should be that complicated, but, but it, it is, is. But it is more complicated. And so I've got a tremendous amount to learn. And that's why you were saying about bills. I'm not worried about introducing a lot of bills. I'm sure. worried about, you know, the kind of legislation that's passed through getting it killed or getting it passed, mm -hmm. depending on what it is. Yeah. I, 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 there are a lot of reps that file, you know, 50, 60 bills. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can do that, and maybe after I'm there longer, <clears throat> I'll do more of that. But I, I, I don't think that's the most important thing. I think it's voting your district, sure. knowing what your district wants, making sure their voice is heard, and mm -hmm. voting to represent your district is the most important thing you do. And then getting out, constituent service. The most important part of this job yeah. is constituent services. Uh, getting out and finding out you know, what's important to you, what's important to uh, you. And I think that when you get this job, it's overwhelming. I, uh, a lot of people will come at you all at once. They want you to go, oh, we've got a meeting. We want you to meet there. And I, I've had this discussion, you know, they say, oh, you got to meet this person. He represents this group and this person he represents this group. And I think the biggest thing you, you've got to remember is that, you know, you need to go out to Rochester and you need to go out to Chatham and you need to go out to the KC Hall out west. Then you need to go to the north end of town to the north end KC. And then you need to go to Stonington. You need to go to Booty, right. Illinois. And you need to get close, well, Riverton and close to Sherman and find out what the people want, not necessarily what sure. these. And, and it's so overwhelming because everybody's, uh, I think you've got to remember mm -hmm. the important people aren't over there. The important people are out in your district. And that's that that that's the most important thing. And I think a lot of people forget that sometimes. They get there so long. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think and there should. is a big push to raise money for reelections and all that. And when you're running every two years, you know, it, it's like you're in a constant election mode. But like I always like I told uh Matt James the other day, I said, you know, the most important thing is if the people like you, because if the people like you, right. the lobbyists and all those people, they got to like you no matter what. Yeah. yeah. If they if they don't vote for you, yeah. those people will never call you again yeah, anyway. So you, right. you got to remember that. Yeah. And so that's kind of my philosophy. Yeah. Well, you know, I was really, uh, Rob, Rob Carr, uh, yeah. Retail Merchants Association, called me on a Saturday morning and he was reading through bills and there was some gender equity bill that's out there that would affect uh, you know, peerless, for instance, right. like, so we can't charge more for a woman's blouse than we can a man's yeah. shirt. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, I said, are you working on Saturday? He goes, yeah, I'll be here all day tomorrow, too. Yeah. So do you have to read a lot of those bills, or do you have people that help you do that? Or Well, 
the the Republicans have, well, well the, we have staff. Okay. I personally read them. A, a lot of the reps yeah. think I'm crazy because sure. I'm trying to read all the bills yeah. and it's overwhelming. But I'm basically just going over the ones in my committee now. But I like okay. to look. So if Brad, Representative Brad Wyck or Representative Hembro, they've got a bill and I know them. I like to read their bills and all that. Yeah. But we've got staff that that re reads all the bills. It's okay. very impressive. Staff does. That's why I said staff works a tremendous amount of hours. So they'll give me the rundown mm -hmm. and they'll have a bill and they'll say, okay. Irma is in favor of this. Okay. Manufacturers gotcha. are in favor yeah. against. Unions might be against it. The hospitals might be against this. Nurses, teachers, and they give you the pros and cons so that you kind of know, okay. you know, how, how it affects different uh, industries and all that. So, I, you get a lot of home. I mean, you yes, you do read the stuff. I like to read it anyway. Sure. And then you have staff that gives you a briefing and a rundown on which different segments of society, society the bills affect and all that. Cool. So, very good. So they give you the bullet points version. He's a yeah. bullet points yeah, guy. Yeah, bullet points. Bullet points. Yeah. 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 you talk too much. Would you just give me the bullet points, please? Yeah, bullet yeah. points. Yeah. Yeah. And they do. And they do. Yeah, give you that's good. And, and it yeah, is well, it would be impossible. Six thousand bills, impossible. as you said. Well, and then to let's, go through let's, all of those. Let's face it. When you get into some stuff, you know, there's some complex stuff. I mean, when you yeah. start, I'm on the Public Utilities Committee. I mean, when you get into energy and the environment, a lot of stuff. They start talking about chemicals, erosion, this cap and place, different stuff. I mean, I no one there has the experience to really, you know know about right. all of that stuff so they've got an ex so you've got a, you've got an expert in every field that knows gotcha. that to give you recommendations yeah, that makes and, all sense. That. and then that's where the lobbyists do come in they they come in so they represent certain groups and they come in and give you their pitch and then the people against it come in and give you the, the their pitch against it and then that, then that's why you're a rep you have to but between all the information, you disseminate the information, and that's how you cast your vote, you know, and figure out what you believe is best for your constituents right here. That so. makes sense. Yeah, there's a ton of information. You can't be a subject matter expert. Right, right. Everything. There's, yeah, there's, I, you know, it, it, it would be impossible. There's too many topics, and, and so many of the bills don't affect, you know, Springfield or Central Illinois, the 95th District. They only affect one small town, you know, somewhere in the south or in the north and all that, so... So since you're my golf partner, is this going to uh, help your golf game this year or hurt it? I think, well, here's what I think. If we play with the right people, <laughs> right. But, you know, as you know, there's yeah. too many lobbyists at the country club as it is. But what, what we need to do is we need to get, we need to get into some big money games with them because yeah. they're going to have to give me a 10 foot. I like it. You know, I like it. You know, yeah. you know, I think from, I think from five foot in, in I, they're gimmies. They're, they're going to be gimmies. Yeah. But I think if I win another, you know, a, yeah. an election, then it'll be six yeah. footers like in and seven yeah. footers in. You know, so if we play the right people, I think we can be successful. You know, I love it. Yeah. I, love I think it. you need to say, you're not going to make the representative put that on you. Know, yeah. Just practice yeah. that line. All the hard work he's doing on our behalf, we got to give him yeah. a putt here yeah. there. So, you know, it yeah. might make us, we, we could win some money this year. Yeah, I think so too. We're down. Yeah, we're Brad down. Yeah. Are down. We're Are you? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't think I yeah. won one time last yeah. year. We raised the, I yeah. raised the meatball prices last year to make up for <laughs> golf balls this year. Yeah. So, uh, so one other serious question before we wrap it up. That's very serious. It, it, well, yeah. I, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. True. true. Um, so how, what's your typical day look like? You're, you're running a business. Yeah. 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 Well, you're representing your well, constituents. Mm -hmm, you're mm -hmm, at the state house. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um, how do you make all that fit together and work? Well, first off, I didn't plan on this, so right. you know, it's a work in progress. Yeah. But you know, I get today up at seven, go to the restaurant, go to the other restaurant, came here, going to the other restaurant. Then I've got you know, this afternoon I've got calls and meetings about different stuff in government, and you know, through session it's it's different. But I, I get up early. You know, go to the restaurant, go back there later and all that. And I'm relying on some staff to do a lot of stuff that I never had them do before. Uh, it, you know, I mean, they're 12 to 16 hour days oh, every yeah. day. Yeah, but, yeah. gotta be. But I worked at it. I think a lot of people, that's the big question. How are you going to do it? I, I go, well, I don't, I know people, they they see you sitting at the restaurant. I'll be talking to you guys. I'm like, oh, you know, well, I'm up and out all the time anyway. Uh you know, my parents have stepped up. My kids and wife have stepped up. Employees have stepped up to do different stuff. Um, I mean, you work more than anybody I know. And that was prior <laughs> to. Prior exactly. To, I yeah. mean, no, yeah. seriously. I mean, we hang out a lot. I mean, yeah. you're at the restaurant every day. I mean, yeah, no, yeah. every day. So we're, we're going to see how how this works. But I, I, I am committed, you know, to doing a good job as state rep. I think that was one of the concerns when I addressed the, the same county Republicans. Are you going to do it? Are you going to go to the events and all that? So like Saturday night, I went to the Heart Bowl, mm -hmm. you know, made, made sure, you know, so I'm going to go to all these events and I'm going to make it work with the restaurant. We'll just have to see restaurant-wise yeah. how. 
how, how it affects. Right now, it's it's fine. Uh, but especially it's difficult in session because we have, and as a freshman, they have a lot of meetings at night. Uh, and after, after your first session, you don't have those as much. So gotcha. I think, you know, you're back to constituent service. And, and if I'm going to cut something out, it's going to be a lot of those, I think might be considered unnecessary meetings. I'm more worried about the constituent. Like I said, I believe you need to worry about going where the constituents are, not necessarily where the other social aspect of the being a rep is, mm -hmm. you know, I said, stick to the district, stick yeah. with the people. And I think everything will, will be just fine. I like it. So good. It's awesome. That's, well, thank you for your service. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, and, and I got my first thank you note from you. It was really nice. Yeah, you've never yeah. said anything nice to me in the last six years well, since I lived here. Right. So I was like, wow. Yeah, do you have I to Because you usually don't have many nice things to say to folks. So do you have to be really nice <laughs> well, now in this new yeah, role? Yeah. You know, that, and that was everybody says, Mike's mean. And, Mike, you know, Mike's, and that's what I had to say to him. I said, do you get to go Do you get to go to work? You know, do you get to go to work with anybody? You know, I said, so I, I'm actually very nice. Like Brad didn't like me for years. And we're not gonna, yeah, we'll just, do that on another uh, podcast. Unfortunately, this podcast. Podcast is too short, um, and Brad's stories are yeah. very long and can be boring sometimes. So we're not going to let him you know. But it's, he's got one good story. It is a great about story. Me, yep. And all, and all that. So, about once, the warm so we're welcome, not doing that the big, today. The warm welcome yeah. I got yeah. from him and his father when we when first, first came over here. Yeah. 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 Uh, he, he was a little weird. <laughs> so, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, no. Uh, I, yeah, I'm smiling all the time. Yeah, That's smiling. why they call me Smiling Mike. Smiling Mike. Smiling Mike. Smiling Mike. <laughs> the state rep from 95, from the 95th district. Good so, man. Yeah. Good man, he so, sounds yeah. like a politician. Yeah, 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 Whatever yeah. you need, yeah. I've got for you. <laughs> you're you're going to fix it, right? Yeah. No, yeah. It's, in all seriousness, we appreciate you. Uh, yeah. It's it's nice to have one of our own, and yeah. somebody who yeah. has the best interest of the business yeah. community and yeah, the, the yeah. constituents in the district in mind. So thanks for serving us, and thanks for joining us today. All right, thank you. This is great. Great.